assembling together. We thank you for lifting our hands. We thank you. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on, and at this time, we're going to have our scripture reading, but I just feel a moving in this place. Come on, I just feel a thank you deep down within my soul. Hallelujah. Come on, at this time, we're going to have our minister in training. Melissa, come up and give us our scripture for this afternoon. Hallelujah. Come on, don't stop your praise as she comes. Lord, everybody. If you have your Bibles, if you can please turn to turn to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. That's Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. We're going to read verses 11 through 13. And if you have it, say amen. amen. So I'm going to read him for the NIV version. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you the hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And the word of the Lord is blessed. better read that word hallelujah come on let's give god praise one more time as our praise team come come on we got to thank him for the word hallelujah hallelujah come on anybody just grateful this afternoon hallelujah i don't know about you but i'm just grateful to be in the house one more time after all the shootings and killings going on i'm just thankful to be here one more time i'm trying to behave but with everything that's going on i just want to thank him for being here one more time. Come on, is that your testimony this afternoon? Come on, I'm just here one more time. Come on, we ain't getting to no accidents. We ain't in no hospital. I'm just thankful I'm here one more time to give God everything that I got. I'm trying to behave, but I'm just grateful. Oh, give thanks oh, give unto thanks the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. 
if you know it's good. you know he's good. Hallelujah. How many know he's been better than good? He's a great God. He's an amazing God. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. Jesus. He's been better than me than I've been to myself. Hallelujah. I don't know if that's anybody else's testimony, but he's been better. Hallelujah. Jesus. that he's better than good yes. so we will bless the Lord at all times, all times. and his praises shall continually be in our mouths yes. hallelujah Jesus
crazy. I should have been locked up in a mental facility. I should have been on medication. But God see fault so fit that my purpose was better than my pain. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and give a praise in this place. Somebody magnify the Lord. Come on, if it had not been for the Lord, who is on my side? We were saying it, but did it know? But if it had not been, I can truly say if it had not been, Power when we call you. When I call your name, I'm 
set free, I'm set free with when I call your name. Yes, I'm healed, yes, I'm healed with when I call your name. Hey, there is power in that name. When I call your name. Come on, there is power in that name. When I call your name. Hey, come. There's so much power in that name. This thing's changed when that name is called. One more time. I, call your name. I feel my healing when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. There is power when Come on, come let the devil is in between your head. Hey. Feel my power when I call you. When I call your name. I feel my healing when I call you. When I call your name. I feel my breakthrough when I call you. I feel the victory when I call you. When I call your name. No more tonight. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. One last time. When I call your name. There is power. There is power. When I call your name. There is power. When I call your name. There is power. When I call your name. If God be for us, we can. One more time. So tell me. But he's helpful when we call him. He's Omega when we call him. Deliver up when we call him. He's a healer when we call him. He's a way maker when we call him. He's a burden bearer when we call him. He's a young destroyer when we call him. Come on, everybody stand into your feet. He's a burden bearer when we call him. I don't know what you're going through, but he's a burden bearer when we call him. He's a restorer when we call him. 
I've known this to be true. He's a restorer when we call him. Out of the market, my reclaim. I don't know what he's done for you, but he's done so much for me. I know it ain't about me, but we're overcomers by the word of our testimony. By the blood of the Lamb. But I tell you, when you got God on your side, you can overcome anything. Any addiction, anything. Ooh. Tired of just coming and clapping my hands, I'm ready to worship. means more than anything. I don't want to hold up the service. But at this time, I'm sorry, Sunday school just got me all stirred up this morning. He's the river of life. He's the living water. I'm not ashamed about it. He's the river of waters. All right, at this time, if you're standing, I'm sorry to tarry the service. But come on, let's just worship him. Let's worship him.
Come on, somebody sing it like you mean it. One more time, everybody say, Jesus went, yes, to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's, yeah, 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 that's love. They hung him high, they hung, stretched him wide. Hung his head for me. Somebody say, Ooh, It's time for the word of the Lord. How many is excited about the word of God? For the Bible declares that man shall not live by bread alone. But look at somebody and tell them by every word, every word, every word. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I don't know what you're looking for on today. But I came here to tell you there's a word in God's mouth for you. This is the season that we seek the word of God like never before. Because God wants to speak to his people. Singing and shouting is all right. But nothing can stabilize you like the word of God. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce the woman of God. She is, amen, truly an anointed woman of God, called chosen and anointed. Amen. She is our youth pastor here at the tabernacle. Amen. Glory to God. So we introduce to you and present to some our youth pastor, Carrie Harris. Receive her in the name of the Lord.
with Jesus in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's in the Spirit of God. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, if you know that God has been good to you. If you know that you know that you know that you know that God has been good to me. That God has been good to you. Come on and lift up your voice in this place. Come on and express yourself to God. What better way to express yourself than through lifting of hands, to the opening up of your mouth, Showing God I love you. Giving God the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 With my hands raised, I say hallelujah. 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 Glory to you. To the lamb that was slain. To the only wise God. Our eternal father. The only one that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means God finds no fault with me because Jesus is my intercessor and he's standing right there pleading for me and he's pleading for you. Hallelujah. I can just praise God all day. I can just praise God all day. He's just that kind of God. Through every storm, through all the rain, through the sunshine and the pain, God's been good. He's been better than good to me. Hallelujah. I think the praise team said it earlier. We could have been dead, sleeping in our grave. I don't know about you, but that's my testimony. Because before I got to Connecticut, they sought to take my life. They sought to take me out of here. So I know that I could have, I could have, but for the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. I got to go on and say, what can wash away? my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You tried, you might have tried, but you missed. And because you missed, I gotta give God the best praise. I gotta lift up my hands. I gotta open up my mouth. Do I got any believers? Do I got any believers in the house? Do I have any believers in the house? Open up your mouth. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Some of you ain't finished praising yet. There's a worship in somebody's belly this morning. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Don't allow the preacher to stop you from giving God your best praise. Reach way down. Find your praise and release. 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 Release your praise. Give God your praise. Give God your heart. Give God your spirit. Open up your mouth. Yeah! Woo! I see, I don't know about 
about you, but I'm not, I'm not no young chickadee. And I done went all summer long through all the heat, through all this heat that has taken out so many elders. But I thank you, Jesus, for your covering. I thank you, Jesus, for your protection. Anybody feel like God has done something for him? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Just got back from family reunion. Just got back. Last weekend. Y'all can sit down. And I had such a good time. And just when I got ready to leave, my niece came running. She said, Auntie, you leaving? I'm like, yeah, it's time to go. She said, didn't you forget something? The Spirit said immediately, go back. You got to pray. Went back, gathered all my family members. And the reason why I'm telling you this story is because every one of them that were there were obedient. As soon as I said, come outside, the place where we were at on Sunday was a little smaller than the campgrounds we were on. So I said, you know what, let's pray outside. And then outside was at a senior citizen's building in their family room. And there were all these people outside, sitting on the benches. And the Spirit of the Lord said, let them hear. So I said, come on, we're going to pray outside. And as they came out, I noticed that the majority of the young people in my family either had a cigarette, a can of beer, wine in their hands. But I thank God for the spirit that they respected me enough to put them down. But, but that's not what my concern was. My concern wasn't about the sitting them down. My concern was about their souls, where they're going. So I realized when I finished praying, I said, Shauna, we got work to do. We got work to do. Hallelujah. Yep, God called me to preach the word. But somebody just said yesterday, charity starts at home. And then it is spread abroad. I need to hit my family. I need to hit my family. It's, for me, it's not enough to just respect my call. Respect me enough to give your life to the Lord. To know that I look the way I look because the majority of them couldn't get over the fact the way I looked. You look like you're in your 30s. No, I'm 62. But it's the hand of God. It's the hand of God that keeps me. It's a living a life that's pleasing to God that keeps me. You want to be kept? Give your life to the Lord. So pray for my family. I didn't mean to pull y'all out, but I just needed to share that. Because if you got friends that you haven't let go of yet that's still partying, that's still drinking, drugging, sexing, all that other stuff they be doing nowadays, it's all right to slip a nice word. It's all right to slip a nice word. You ain't got to beat them. You don't got to beat them over the head. But never walk away. Never walk away without planting something. Plant something. Okay. Here we go. I give honor today. To God who is the head of my life. Give honor to the good shepherd of this house, our apostle Moses T. Bethune. Come on, stand up. 
give honor. The word of God says give honor to whom honor is due. We honor you on this morning, Apostle, to our Pastor P, my mama. Call her my mama. She don't know I watch everything that she does, everything that she says. <laughs> and I take it to heart because she's pure. She's true. She's upright. Come on and put your hands together for Pastor P. I love you. I love you. I love you. I give honor to all the MITs. God is moving in the house. MIT Melissa, MIT Genesis, MIT Moesha, am I missing MIT Keisha? I give honor to you on today, to the ministers of the house. Give honor to you, Miss Minister Ebony and Minister Marquis. To our Deacon Anthony and to our Mother Bethune. The wisdom of the house. To Mother Bethune, we honor you. Hallelujah. I'm excited, guys. And I'm nervous. It's been a minute. I'm going to go back to a particular passage of Scripture. I'm going to go to, and right after I tell you what it is, you'll I'm going to go to back to Joshua. I talked about Joshua a couple of, maybe a month ago in Bible study. But then this week, God gave me a new revelation about this word, about this book, Joshua, the sixth book of the Old Testament. First five books, law books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Then we hit our 12 history books. And the first one is Joshua. So when you get a chance, before I pray, open up your, your Bibles, open up your phones, open up your apps to Joshua, the sixth chapter. Couple of verses. Before I do that, let's pray. Let us stand to our feet. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now. We honor you. We glorify your name. For there is no one greater than you. You are Abba, Father. You are the great I am. You are he who was and is to come. I come before you this morning just to say thank you for the opportunity to stand behind your sacred desk and to declare the word of the Lord, to declare what you have given me to give to your people. Speak, Holy Ghost. Have your way in this place. Have your way starting in me. Move me out of the way. Carry no longer exist, but it's your servant, your woman servant, that is standing in your stead. Speak like never before. Speak with clarity. Speak with wisdom. Speak with understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, do a new thing, God, in this word on today. Regulate minds and hearts, God. Open the ears of your people, Lord God. Open their hearts, God, that they will receive this word. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin with me. As you've already started, you spoke to me, God. Now I'm going to speak to your people. Lord God, when I reach for your word, help me to find it. Find it with ease in the name of Jesus. Help me to speak with simplicity that even the youngest among us will understand what you are saying to your people. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Now with the words of my mouth 
in the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee in Jesus' name. Amen. That was the short version. Okay, y'all found the Bible. Y'all found the word. Okay. Let me go over here. Joshua, the sixth chapter. And I'm going to only read two verses. Verse 4 and verse 5. And let's read that in chorus. As Pastor P says, that means everybody together. Everybody got it? Say amen. Y'all ready? Starting at verse 4. I'm reading in the King James Version. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of rams, horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down. You may take your seats. There's an old... There's an old children's rhyme that says, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. But I got to take it a little step further if I can. I would like to leave with you today. Your walls are coming down. Your walls are coming down. I need a drink of water. Now, when we look at um, Joshua, the book of Joshua, I'm not going to go into all of his history, but Joshua was the man that before Moses died, declared that he was going to be his successor and lead the Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land. Now let me go back for the Bible scholars because Joshua didn't lead them out of Egypt. Moses did that. But then they got to the Jordan River and they circled around. And they circled around, I believe, 400 years until all the disobedient ones died off. To all the ones that worshipped the idol gods. But the God of Abraham was put on the back burner. They all died. And then God spoke to Joshua. And then the story began. Now, Jericho was the first city that is conquered with Joshua as the leader of the Israelites. Because remember, God made a promise to the Israelites that he was going to take them where? Into the promised land. What's in the promised land? Flowing with milk and honey. Amen. So y'all already know the enemy trying to mess with me. But I give him notice. I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. You might as well find somebody else. <laughs> because it's not me. <laughs> I declare it. Hallelujah. So what I read in your hearing, it says Joshua gathered the army and the priest just as God had instructed. And for the first six days, the armed men marched around the city. I want to stay in place. Once. They only marched around the city once. 
And as they marched around the city, the soldiers were carrying their trumpets and they carried the Ark of the Covenant. It says in Joshua 6 and 20, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the, at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight into the city. And they took it. That's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. Just bear with me. Just bear with me. Hallelujah. So, I think I done said it now twice about how the army, the Israelites marched around the city six days. Only one time a day. What you trying to say? What am I saying to you? What I'm trying to say is they did as God instructed. God gave an order, and they followed. What am I trying to say to you today? There's an order that is set up in your life for you to follow. And, and yes, let's, let's not be crazy. Let's not think that this road is going to be an easy road. Because nowhere in the word of God did it ever tell us that this journey was going to be an easy journey. Nope, didn't say it. You best to believe Joshua, who is now in charge of the Israelites, after they have all he sent in the two spies, you know, to see how they could get in to the city. Then God came and gave him a certain instruction to follow. If I could have been back there then, I could see me looking at them saying, you got to be crazy. Ain't there any other way we can get into this city without tearing the walls down? They got to be a better way. Because the people of Jericho built the walls to keep the Israelites but I'm here to tell you, there's some walls in your life. Because <laughs> this is what this sermon is about, your walls. Just as Jericho set up walls to keep the Israelites out, the enemy has set up walls, have set up barriers in your life. How do I know? Walls of depression. Walls of envy, walls of jealousy, walls of suicide, walls of fear, walls of doubt, walls of disbelief that I know that I can't make it. But guess what? You can make it. Because what seems to be the impossible, we serve a God that specializes in the impossible. There is nothing that is too hard for God. God is able to do all things but fail. The reason we fail is because we move without him. We do our own thing without God. And then when things don't line up the way that we want them to line up, then we run back and seek God. And the thing I loved about Joshua was Joshua did three things. One, he heard. Two, he listened. Three, he followed. Three instructions. He heard God first. When he heard him, he shut everything down. God says, that's what's wrong with us. You notice I said us. I'm included. Shut the TV off. Shut the phones off. Get out of Facebook. Get out of 
Instagram. Get out of Snapchat and all that other good stuff that seems to consume every part of our lives. Find yourself in your secret place. How many got a secret place? Find yourself in your secret place. See, the thing about that, uh uh-oh, the thing about the secret place, we got one. And we'll go in there for a couple of minutes. And then we run right back out. And we do our thing. But God says, get into your secret place. Hear me. Listen to me. And follow me. I think there's a scripture that says, deny self. Take up your cross and follow me. See, what the enemy would have us to believe, because he, you know, he thinks we're ignorant, but we're not ignorant. We serve a God that <laughs> speaks and things come into existence. So the same spirit that works inside of God works inside of us. We have the ability to speak to some things. Hebrew said that we can speak to the rock and to the mountain and the mountain will be what? Removed. So there's walls that are in your life on today. I'm not going to be long because I need to get right to the point. Satan is determined to kill, steal, and destroy. His plan is to never allow Jeremiah 29 and 11 to even come to pass. She already spoke it this morning. For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of good and not of evil. Plans of hope and a promise. So I know that God has made you a promise. Come on and shout if God has made you a promise. And the same way that God has made the Israelites a promise, and he affirmed it when he allowed the walls to fall, God will affirm your promises if you would just get in line. Get in line, people of God. Get in line. Follow the instruction. Hear. Listen. Follow. God has a footprint that is designed just for you. See, when I think about the walls of Jericho, And I think about the people when they got to that seventh day. Because on the seventh day, it was a wall of victory that was declared. The people now marched around that wall seven times. Seven times. Seven means completion. Means it's done. Seven times. Joshua leading the way. Knowing that what God said, he said it, he going to do it. So on that seventh day, they marched. They blew the trumpets. The people shouted. And the walls came falling down. But what I want to tell you about your walls is, God will allow your walls to fall in such a design that those walls that's full of rubbish will now become your ramp into your destiny. God won't hold nothing back from you. There's a bridge that God is trying to build just for you. The way he built it for Joshua and the Israelites, God says, I'll do it for you. I promise that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Put your hand in my hand. Where you lead, I will go. I will follow. Make the rubbish become my ramp that I can walk into where you want me to go. If you said I'm a preach, let me preach. If you said I'll be a builder, let me be a builder. If you said I'm gonna be a teacher, let me be a teacher. If you said I'm gonna be a mother, let me be a mother. If you said I'm going to be a father, 
let me be a father. Hallelujah. God's word is a lamp unto your feet and it's a light unto your pathway. All you got to do is follow. Follow, 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 follow. We struggle, we struggle, we struggle, we struggle. God sits on the throne and he looks at us and I believe he has to shake his head because he just can't understand why my people keep struggling over something that I've already put in place. It's already done. Just follow me. Read my word. I decree and declare. I won't steer you wrong. I know the plans that I have for you and I want to make them good. But there's always a but. You know what that word but means for me? It's a rebuttal. It means you got to say something back. Don't. Just do it. Just do what God says do. So, now they have taken the city. And the thing I loved about it, they didn't have to fight. You got this army in place. But when I think about the army, I think about the order. But when, when God sets a battle in place, who go first? Who go first? Judah. Don't Judah go first? Hallelujah. Well, the priest. And here come Judah. Who is Judah? They're the praisers. Hallelujah. So some walls in your life going to stay there because you won't give God praise. Can I go there? We come to church. We look so pretty. We look so pretty. Our hair done. We got our makeup on. Man, you got your pants, your shirts tucked in your pants. And as soon as the praise team starts, you can't even get up. They can sing three songs, and you never move your seat. You never leave your seat. So how can God do something when you can't praise him? We got to give God praise for the things he's done for the things that he's going to do because in this case they praised God before it they got they gave God praise while the walls were falling down I dare somebody right now to think on the goodness of Jesus I dare somebody right now to think of all the hell you've been through and open your mouth and give God a praise. Because it's in your praise. It's in your praise. The word of God says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the hearts. Praise him with the sounding cymbals. Praise him with your voice. Praise him with your hands. Praise God with everything that you have. We shouldn't walk in the church and beg you to praise. You ought to praise on your way in. You ought to praise on your way out. You ought to praise every morning. New mercies you see when you open your eyes. Give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus for another day as you go throughout your day take some time to say to the Lord Lord I thank you Lord I just want to thank you because you've been so good to me you've been so good to me how you open doors that's been closed in my face how you keep on making a way every night I go home I got food to feed my children. I got shoes to put on their feet. I got a job to go to. There's a God that needs to be glorified. I dare you to open up your mouth. Glorify God. Express 
your love for the Father who has done all things, all things well in your life. Hallelujah. How dare us? How dare you sit down on God when he's your way maker? How dare you sit down on God because he's your way maker? Because he's your life sustainer. He's your heartbeat. How dare you act like you can do it all by yourself. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. But with God, all things, all things, not some things, not one thing, but all things, all things, all things. God is able to do what he said he will do. He is not a man that he will lie. If he said it, if he said it, woo, if he said it, I believe it. I receive it. It's done. It is well with my soul. How many of you can decree it that it's well with your soul have you done what he asked you to do have you spent a little time with jesus have a little talk with jesus tell him all about your struggle god says oh they're gonna get mad there's some people in here that i've called still sin still sin fraud making us think that they ready to work but they not gonna move but I'm here to tell you time is winding up God says either you move or I'm gonna move you God says either you move or I'm gonna move you tear down those walls that keep you from doing the things that God's called you to tear down the walls tear down Allow God, allow God to rebuild in the name of Jesus. Allow God to be your ramp. Allow God to be your bridge. Don't envy, just cross over. Don't envy, just cross over. Because I heard my pastors say it over and over again. That your time is coming. But can I give him a harsh reality? If you don't get in place, it's going to pass right over you. It's going to pass right over you. And then you're going to find yourself like this. Trying to catch it. But you're not going to be able to catch it. You won't be able to catch it. Because yes, we serve a sovereign God. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a sovereign God. We serve a patient God. Because he waited for the children of Israel a long time. Y'all know the story. But we got all that time behind us. That's gone. And we don't know what tomorrow will bring, what it will hold. This right here, this word right here should get you to the place where all you think about is God. Because you don't know how long you got. Oh, the fruit of your lips, you should be praising them now. Because guess what? We can walk outside and it'll be over. Anything can happen to us. 
But I, what I want you to leave out of here with today is all those walls that life's circumstances made us put up. Because when we get broken, we build a wall. A wall goes up. When you break my heart, wall goes up. I get fired from my job. I didn't. Wall goes up. When, when your friends that you thought you had declare today that we no longer friends, wall go up. Boyfriend don't treat you right, wall go up. And every last one of these walls keeps us bound. It locks you up. So think about this. If you're locked up, oh, I just saw the wall hit you, falling in my mouth. You know, if you find yourself locked up and you hollering, come get me, come get me, but I come, but I can't get in. I came, but I can't get in. Jesus stands at the door of your heart. And what Jesus is doing is he's knocking. He's knocking, but we won't let him in. So if we don't let Jesus in, how's the wall going? How does the walls that you have built so high break without God. It can't. We can't move without God. You might think you can. You might think you have, this is your ability because my mind speaks to my arm and my arm opens up that I did this. This is God. This is God. Because it's God that built my mind. It's God who breathed the breath of life into us and we became what? A living. So your life, and I'm almost done, your life is not your own. It's, it's real tough now. And this is my first time preaching in a minute. And Lord knows I want to preach something that everybody shouted all over the place. But God says it's time out for that. Because you can't shout your way into heaven. You can shout all you want to. But if you ain't living it, that song that says, if you live right, heaven belongs to you. If you don't live right, heaven don't belong to you. I'm just going to say it. Because we got to get to the place. And Lord knows, I'm not trying to run. Let me make this very clear. I'm not trying to run nobody out to church because of the word of God. But the word of God is supposed to cut to the marrow. Because that will change your life. The reason why I went into what I went into, and I'm done. The reason why I talked about the law books and then I talked about Joshua being a history book is because history is important. Why? For a lot of reasons, it's important. But this, these two right here stuck out for me because it teaches us what not to do. It teaches us, it gives us an understanding of what has happened. So when we go back and look in the Old Testament, all we see is the hand of God. The Old Testament is full of what God can do, what God has done, and what he's capable of doing. And God didn't play. 
See, so today, we take all this history for granted because we know that God is a merciful God, that God is a loving God, that all I got to do is pray and ask for forgiveness, and everything is going to be all right, and everything will be all right if you don't go back and do that again. See, you're not supposed to repeat history. Why go back? So Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. And as they said way back then, and the wall came tumbling down. What battle in your life are you willing to let God fight for you? What battle are you willing to let God fight for you? Because the thing about this, when I said to you, they won, the walls fell down, the army never had to fight because God fought. God fought through his strategic, how do you say that word? Strategic plan. God worked that battle and the walls came falling down. Now, how did he work it? I already told you. He gave them specific instructions. So if you today, if there's anybody that don't really know the plans that God has for you, ask. Ask. I'll t I tell you no lie. He will answer. He will answer you. God does not want us walking around living life day by day with no plan. With no destiny that you are trying to reach. My destiny is heaven bound. How about you? My destiny is heaven bound. I'm living so I can live again. I don't want my life to be over when they put me in the grave. I want to hear the angels sing. I want to sing with the angels. Let me not lie. That's my, that's my plan. That's my, I got a plan. Because they tell me that heaven has different, how you want to say that? Say that again? There you go. I use that word. Okay. Different dimensions, different levels. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Different levels. I'm just that crazy. I'm just that crazy to believe that my level is going to be right on the head. I want my spirit to touch his spirit. That's just how close I want to be. Where do you want to be? Because I don't want to look down from heaven and see your soul burning in the lake of fire. Because if that happens, it's over. So yes, y'all been hearing this word probably as long as I have. That Jesus is soon to come. But he is. Look at, look at what's happening in the world. You, they might not be talking about it as they was in the beginning, but the war is still going on. The wars haven't stopped. They're still happening. Daughters against mothers. Mothers against daughters. Fathers against sons. It's all happening now. The, the plague of suicide is bigger than ever. Bigger than ever. With the young kids now. Kids eight, nine, ten years old, taking their lives because they can't handle what they're not supposed to be handling in the first place. Their children. So, as I'm, when I get ready to take my seat, 
Let me talk to the young children for a second. You're getting ready to go back to school, right? Next week? Some this week. Tear down the walls of bullying. Don't allow anybody to make you build up a wall because they don't know how to treat you. Open up your mouth and say something. We got to get to that place, children, that we are not afraid to talk to our parents. That we are not afraid to go talk to your principal. Not afraid, go talk to your secretary. Whoever you find yourself comfortable with, you tell it. Because we're going to break these walls. We're breaking down walls of generational curses. There's a lot of alcoholism in my family. I'm breaking it. I'm going to break that wall. I'm going to break that wall. I mean, and I'm, I know I'm live. I got sisters and I got brothers that were alcoholics. Their children are today. Their children followed in those footsteps. Got to break the wall. Break the walls. Break the walls of division. Because let me tell you, New Destiny, where God is getting ready to take us, every chance the enemy has, he's going to try to cause discord. But we're coming against that wall right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're coming against anything that is not like God. Anybody that has their own personal agenda, we come against it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is the house of God. This is the house of prayer. Your temple is the body of the Holy Ghost. Am I right? I, I might didn't get you to shout today. But I hope you heard me. How many of you want your walls to come down? How many of you will admit that you have some? Let's start today. Come on down to the altar. And let's allow our leaders to start praying for you. So today is your first day. That the walls begin to tremble. Let's make them tremble. Let's make them tremble. And don't forget to praise God until it's done. When that wall falls down, you give God your best praise. You reach way down, but the wall can't break unless you admit it. And you come and get the help that you need so that the walls are broken. Walls of family being dysfunctional. Praying for husbands and wives. Praying for parents and their children. All these walls that seem to cause so much destruction. We're going to break them. It's important for them to be broke. Humpty Dumpty couldn't put back that man together again. Am I right? That's what it said. He couldn't put the man back together again. But we serve a man. <laughs> His name is Jesus. <laughs> that what I love about him is when he tear it down, he rebuilds. And he makes it brand new. We get a chance to start over. We get a chance to redo. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid today. I know there's some more people that got some walls that need to come down. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Come on, I dare y'all to open.